How did you convince Dick to let you roll with a beard? Oh, good question. Because they, um, there was actually a rumor after I got the roll that, they, that the beard was going to leave. And I, my beard hides the fact that I don't have a very, very strong jawline. Hello, hey Marlene. Oh my goodness. Where are you? I'm in New York. Nice. Uh, that view, Thank you're just you. showing off. It's you're a it's a small off. place, but the, the view the view makes up for it for sure. I'm in Brooklyn, in Williamsburg. You are nice, nice, nice. I used to live in the slope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I did a little research and I saw that you uh, were born in Brooklyn. Um, after looking at like your IMDb and how long you've been in the, you know, this, this wolf world and everything, there's a lot yeah. I kind of want to talk and, and learn from you about because it's, uh, you know, we're on year three and it's just, just this massive, intense sort of thing. And, and what you've been in the family for what, seven, eight years? Um, so the, the full time family here, yes, I'm starting season six, but my first gig was a wolf film out of school. Period. First Period. Gig, what's up? First gig, Law and Order, fell in love with the wolf pack. And from then on, I said, I know I'm a wolf packer. Like, I knew it. I don't know why. Yeah. It's so strange. I love it. So I have oh, so man. many questions for you because I'm looking forward to getting to know you. Yeah. I really appreciate your work. And I want, I want it to be the guy behind it. Sure. So, since uh, I can't beg Dick to put me on one of your shows, I figure, you know, this is my best shot right now. Don't, don't count it out. We had Tracy from uh, Chicago I know. PD. Yeah, and but unless it, you're you know. sick, you won't meet me. Sure. Well, we are in the world with this uh, epic pandemic. Right. You never know. That there might be, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear cool. you. It could be cool. So you're on med right now. Yeah. Yeah, you've come from you, you. You played different characters on Law and Order and on Law and Order SVU. Yes, I've done and SVU. Then, so you know how Wolfpack is just like this umbrella of humanity, and anything Dick can put his right. hands on to create a great story, he does. So I've done Law and Order SVU, The Mothership, which was the original Law and Order. Yeah, um, and I also did Conviction which was another Dick Wolf show. Which was, it, which was the wolf, okay. Yes, and I also did yeah. Law and Order Try by Jury. I did that one too. Well, there, I feel like there's such, there's just, there's no right or wrong. There's no, uh, you know, you can't really, you don't know how, what's gonna happen. One year could turn into a spinoff or this or that. And it's like, I'm just so happy to be, you know, welcomed into the family and, and just focusing on one show yeah. but I know like their heads are turning and like they could it could it could go anywhere but you're a spinoff too you're yeah, a yeah. we have a, a spinoff yeah we have a spinoff and um it's called FBI Most Wanted which mm -hmm. airs after us which is it's just awesome I mean getting into this show and realizing you know the duty we have to at least have some sort of representation for the bureau that's like right. so intense and there's so many different levels you could have I mean, Dick could make 500 FBI shows and, and, and all of it would, would, would work because it's For real. nothing's the same. Every unit's different, all that, all that kind of stuff. I have some questions for you. It's so cool. I love it. Let's do I it. Have, I have some questions, okay? These yeah. are fun Zico questions. So have nothing to do with your character. <laughs> all right, perfect. And first of all, let me ask you something. How much do you work out? Because uh, you look I great right work. now. And I'm like... How, how much you, do you, you work out? I I work out a lot. I work. I try to work out Dude. once a day ish. But I, I lost a hundred pounds over the past eight years, and it's it's not a natural. Uh, you know, I I don't keep weight off easily, so it's it's a constant battle. And and I when I went into COVID, things got a little cheeky at the end of last season, and I I, I had to drop thirty pounds over over the break, but. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's every day I, I have to. And, and for me, working out before going to set just gets my mind right. And 
and lets me carry right. myself in a different way. It doesn't really even matter about the intensity anymore. It's just going through the motions, and then by the end of the season, if I can stay consistent, then we're in a good place. And what do you do? What kind of workouts? Are you a CrossFitter? Are you weights, jogging? I am obsessed with, I'm obsessed with doing uh, different stuff for long periods of time, maybe six months and get into something else. I got into CrossFit. It's the most amazing environment, especially post college and post high school sports. You have this community, which is really awesome. Right. Um, but it's it's taxing, and it's it's definitely hard to go work for twelve hours after that. And, and sustainability yeah. is a little interesting. The Peloton I really like because it's the quickest way to get from your bed to a workout when it's in your house. I made a direct correlation between money and working out because I would always say you know back in the day if someone was paying me to work out see you later I'd be at the gym right. every day and then it was like hold on I'm six five I'm bigger I'm 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 too I'm not fit enough or or the right shape to play a football player per se but I'm the weight and the height and then it clicked that if I do train and I do you know focus on fitness and get to a place maybe I can book that role on on ballers and then maybe that that you know I, I get enough money to justify the past eight years and, and stuff like that so and it's just you know you feel just great about it. I feel the same way if I just do my laundry you know it's just accomplishing like my expectations yeah. and my goals and stuff but yeah and it's interesting because I when I, I was looking at you I'm like he has the body of so I play sports I played basketball yeah uh, I want to say close to 20 years. Like I played all, all the way up to college and uh, yeah. that's in Canada. So don't go like, why don't you go play in WNBA? Why don't you the, pull that off? No, no, it's different. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. In Canada, a star here. Right. right. Never, never. <laughs> Calm down. And I was that. <laughs> yeah. And I was that girl that was playing with lipstick, getting her nails right. done and like mascara yeah. with lashes. Yeah. And I'm the girl that's like on and really good at defense, getting really, really low. And I was really taunting people and I would go like, come on, try to get past me. It was really bad. It was really, yeah. really bad. Yeah. I mean, the college league um, is just, it's fun when you can play at CJ level, play which is, too. yeah. So, but yeah. the way it works in Canada is you graduate high school a year earlier. So it's more like the British system. Sure. So you graduate high school a year earlier than the US. So you, I graduated at 16 and, um, and then you go to junior college. And in junior yeah. college is where I continue to play it all the way to college. So I, sure, sure, you know, sure. it's like, yeah, yeah. So, um, and then summer leagues and stuff like that right. with girls. Of course, and, it's, it's, and, your, it's your entire life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, the whole look, I love the whole, I love the swagger of basketball. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there's, of there's just certain sports that I think I'm attracted to them because of the swagger and the form behind mm -hmm. it. So I, I always call myself, my husband's a jock. Um, and I call myself a glam jock. I've yeah. always been a glam jock. Right. I just love it. I like, love it. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Get all my hair done, like right. all dope. And then I'll have a track suit on with some earrings. That's it. Yeah. See you later. Like, yeah, that's just me. I've always been, I, I just love fly track suits and getting all dolled up. And cause you never know what could happen. Okay, so let's get into some of these serious questions that I have for you, Zeke Man. Do you have a nickname? Please, please. Zeke, well, my real name is Zechariah, Zachariah. So my nickname Zachariah. is my stage name. Yes, man. Nice. Uh, okay, so if, if Zeke had a chance to be in a boy band, which boy band would he be in? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. When you said that question, I immediately remember second grade, my unfinished basement, rollerblading to Backstreet Boys aggressively. And I don't know why I leaned more towards them than in sync, but it's gotta be Backstreet's back for sure. Da, da, na, na. I agree yeah, with you. I mean, they had the spaceship, the dance, like. Anyway, this is, this is good. This is good, okay. Yes, Backstreet Boys for sure. Nice, okay. Next question. Do you have any other art form outside of the one that you practice that you really appreciate? Um, not that I do. 
I've tried to channel everything into this, but I guess photography that I'm, that I'm, that I'm was always very obsessed with. And, and I opened up a headshot uh, company in Atlanta. We taped auditions and did headshots just to justify kind of keeping everything in the industry. And that was like so much fun getting into figuring all that stuff out, how it works. But it's like, if you're not obsessed, so obsessed with something like photography or, or, or right. any of these art forms, you just watch people progress so much faster than you and get to a place that you're like, I'll never be that. So let's, let's put the camera away and, and, and stop wearing that as a, as a badge. But I love photography. I love uh, photography for sure. If I, I think if the life that Tom from MySpace is living, which he, he yeah. sold MySpace and just travels the world and, and takes pictures, is I think the, the, the goal for sure. You know, I have, um, I follow photographers on Instagram. Yeah. I love, I love seeing through people's eyes. So I think one of my favorite people on set is the DP because Always. of that. The Absolutely. DP, their eye, the way that they see. And during the break, I bought the new Sony. Yeah. And with the extra lens and I'm not, I'm still a novice at it, but I realized that I, re I appreciate, so one, the lens was a, a gift for my husband. So he gave me this massive lens and I'm like, dang, I mean, now I need to get a camera. So he gave me this lens that's like, you know, can like take a picture of Mars. And I'm like, well, now I need to get a camera. So I got the camera and I realized mm -hmm. that I love the entire experience of the stillness behind it. It's like a meditative state for me. And yeah. just waiting for my eye and my soul to capture a shot, you know? Sure. It, it's, it's weird. Yes. And, and it was a great release for me during COVID. Just stilling my heart and looking behind a filter. Does that make sense? I Am think, I making sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think okay. it, I think it, uh, it's weird to like go up and stare at somebody you know, and like yeah. really be just like, whoa, you know, and, and get in there. But the second you put a camera in your hand, they're okay with it. And you get to kind of step out of this, you know, insecure, vulnerable sort of dynamic. And, and then you get to show them like what you saw. And it's yeah. always a like, oh my God. And that is all, is, is everything. Cause I mean, especially in today's world, the second a camera comes out, no matter how confident or no matter how, how whatever a person feels, there's always that sense of like, no, not now, no, please, this, does this look right or whatever. And right. getting, to, getting to show somebody that everything they're worried about just in that one moment, like, no, well, see, it's not, or this or that, or look how, and, and especially with how, you know, the good cameras capture and, and, and stuff like that, I think that's just such an amazing, little little gift um and think about it. i mean people hold on to a good picture of them for 10 years and yep, like being able to you know give somebody that or or just show them I, I think it's like a really um i think it's kind of the only way to to do that right now if that makes any sense like it's one of the only ways to really just put money where your mouth is or, or actually right. just have have proof and 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 it's just nice to show somebody that you see something that they don't and, and getting to show people what you saw and because and, no one will ever be able to until cameras and, and all of that stuff. Do you like music? Yeah, love music. Um, what kind? To, I grew up to oldies and like my grandma would give me, uh, she gave me like a really awesome kiss with, um, you know, like, the like oldies earth wind and fire temptation oldies versus the alternative kind of rock and, and, and Aerosmith that like a lot of my friends have like kind of grown up to. Um, and then that got me really into obviously hip hop, but then anything, I got all my different playlists, electronic, all, all that stuff. I love, I love it, but I never really got in, you know, I don't do anything with it or, or involved in it, but yeah, of course. What about you? Except, except to dance, you must dance. Yes, of course. Are you a good dancer, Zeke? Absolutely not. What? There's the only Zika. way to, that's the only way to set your expectations correctly. If there's ever a, there's a fan right now that's crying. I'm she, convinced. You I look can, like I you can, got moves. I can, I can dance like 
I can do a lot of things for like 15 seconds to make you think right. I can do it. But then it's like, no, nah, you know, and we're off. But can you groove? Sure. Like grooving yes. is just like. Yeah, of course. It's just that. So. Can you groove? I, li can I like groove? to. I like to believe I, I can groove a little. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you, people people think that like dancing, you need a lot. You just like you just gotta like yeah, be in your it. car. We've all seen we've yeah. all seen Hitch. We just gotta live right here. Stop it. We just gotta live Stop right it. here. <laughs> naughty Zico, naughty, okay. naughty. That was good. But dude, do you know like music is so important to me? If I'm getting a car, I don't care what car it is. Give me mm. a Ford, give me a Maserati. I don't care what car it is. But if the sound system doesn't make sense, if you don't have a surround sound that makes sense, yeah. I can't roll with you. I can't roll with you. I can't do that. Absolutely. I can't. And I think music doesn't sound, sounds the best in a car, especially alone and, yeah. and driving, driving, you know, on a highway. The shower, the shower. Fair enough. Fair enough, the but they're those that in those intimate places. I mean, I'll I'll. Why'd I'll, you have to go listen. there? Why'd you go all the way there? Where? <laughs> to an intimate place? <laughs> it's not, I think the shower is not intimate. Everybody showers. I'm talking about a great sound system in your bathroom is essential. Are you telling me you got some, like some Bose speakers in your in your bathroom? No, um, uh, Onyx. You know device. the Onyx? Yeah. So yeah. you know the circular one? So I have yeah. so my bathroom technically could take off. That's how much eight oh eight is in my bathroom. Sure, 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 so, sure. My bathroom is out of control. So it's chandelier. Like I put chandeliers everywhere. I don't care. I have chandeliers everywhere. I love right. chandeliers. In the in garage, every, in the laundry dude, rooms. Dude, 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 chandeliers. Lighting is it. essential for me. Lighting. Fair enough. Lighting, the way I see things is essential. Uh, the texture of the atmosphere yeah. is really important to me. So um, um, I'm very spiritual. So when, I, when I'm in a space, I really like the twinkle of light. Sure. So that's why I caught right away to your backdrop. I, I love the idea of the sky and the water and how it's hitting. Because I don't know, it just there's these things, you know, this moment that we're living right now, we'll never live it again for me. And that's so precious, yeah. you know? So yeah. I'll never get a chance to meet Zico again. Like, I'll see you again and be like, remember we did the interview? But this but is my only chance. Yes. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. So it, it. it's, really, it's really special for me to be able to do that with a wolf packer. And, and to think that every time I watch, um, I didn't know you were 6'5". Mm. That is something blessing, that blessing and a curse. Said it. Really, blessing hard. and a curse. Uh, it, it's it's good at concerts, but bad on airplanes. Yeah, for real. You got to go first class every time. Well, that was the, the that was honestly the only reason I, I I work hard in my life is to get to the front of the plane where I can <laughs> <laughs> where I can relax. Yeah, but that's it's my only need. motivation. I hear you. Yeah, um, like Tom Selleck, you know that Tom mm. Selleck and Tom Selleck's mustache are two different people, right? Like there's yes. Tom Selleck and there's Tom Selleck's mustache. The collab of the two that people. Yeah. The collab has created a career and a myth. Hmm? And, I'm, and I believe you're on your way to that. So my question to you is this, are you aware that there is such a thing as Zico and Zico's beard? And the big question to that hmm. is how much time do you spend perfecting the art form of your beard on my beard that's actually beard. good that's actually that's a that's a good question um i i i i am aware they're two different things i actually i have my own internal external dialogue with my beard um he is a security blanket and a you know always been there for me and, and all these things until it gets, sometimes it's gotten caught in things. It, like, it got caught at, at, at a weight at the gym and terrified. But if it's, uh, if it's already been trimmed up in the past day or two, we'll spend a nice 15 minutes on him. Cause we'll, we'll do, we do product and we do product and then we lay and then we see and then we let it dry and then maybe we trim. 
Um, but I've been known to spend maybe an hour in front of the mirror with a, with a pair of scissors and just an overwhelming amount of anxiety until, until I walk off. But it's, it's, a, it's a very fun part of my, my life. How did you convince Dick to let you roll with a beard? Oh, good question. Because they, um, there was actually a rumor after I got the roll that, they, that the beard was going to leave. And I, my beard hides the fact that I don't have a very, very strong jawline. And, you know, we all find our things to, to use to, to, you know, to push the needle in, in the way we look. But, um, you know, it was really exciting with the show. It was originally a Latino character, and then they changed it to be Middle Eastern. And, you know, becoming a, a lead or a protagonist on network television, being Arab American, I'm really excited that we were going to be all on the same page with, yes, we are not trying to get him by as something else, but being in full, full support of that. And me without a beard doesn't hit as hard that I am an Arab American Muslim. And, you know, having the beard is, is putting the stereotype in that positive light, which I feel like was our whole message. And, you know, I, I think it's really awesome to have, an Arab American Muslim protagonist on network and not watering it down. And so I'm just really happy that we, you know, the whole package kind of got delivered. You know, fun fact, most people don't know this about me, but <clears throat> so my father's grandfather is from Damascus, Syria. Oh, father's gra that. great grandfather. Your father's well, great grandfather. Grandfather. Your great -great. So my great, yeah is from yeah. Damascus, Syria. And uh, so his name was Aflaq. So yeah. um, when I, so I, I took my husband's name, but my father's name is Mark Habib Aflaq. Mark Habib Aflaq? See, si, yeah, Habib. Ah, I yeah, like that. Yeah. Not... Yes. Yeah. And his, his, his father looked a lot more like you but sure. lighter, lighter beard. So he looked very much like a, 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 a Syrian Haitian. So, so we're very proud of our Syrian heritage, very proud to be a representation of the multiculturalism of, of, of the world, you know? So, and it was a big conversation yeah, in our yeah. family. So I actually have, have some Syri Syrian in me too. Oh, you do? That's amazing, yeah. So when I was watching all these, you know, these, I did a lot of research on, on Syria and wanted to know about my heritage because I have, on my father's side is Haitian American and on my mother's side is Italian and Haitian. So it's like this melting pot that leads to who I am. And I think because of that, you know, there's a, there's a thought process behind me where I'm always trying to figure out, you know, the, the beauty of how we come together, you know, as human beings and, what it means. And one of the next places that I want to visit in my lifetime is everywhere from Middle East to going all the way. I, I want to do the whole journey. Do you shoot 22, 24? 22, we, we went for, we did 22 season one. We went for 23 last season, but got cut short. But yeah, we, yeah, uh, yeah for sure, for sure. It really gets, I, I never thought, when you think about it, because when we hit the 100th episode, I'm looking forward for you. I to... literally did the math today. I was like, you God, this is crazy. Yeah, so, so I'm really looking forward to, to seeing what's going to happen with your show. You have such a special cast. And I'm not surprised. You know, I, one of the magics I always think about Dick is how he finds these gem of people. And I'm not surprised that we have this conversation. This is good. Really, I really um, enjoy. I wish I had now me too. To come back so I could have my questions for you. Yes, but we need. I knew I knew I was going to do this. I knew I had so many questions. I wanted to ask you one of those things Did you win best smile in your yearbook? I <laughs> no, I won. I won class clown, and really? maybe I didn't win best smile because the beard wasn't there yet. And remember, the beard's a very important part. Very important, very important. Got it. Okay, I didn't win Best Smile either. I just did not win that. But I did win Miss Popular. 
<laughs> really? I was right? Because I got cried out loud. I feel I like did. we would have been, we would have been, you know. Yeah, definitely. Because um, I we would have hung out. I was the queen of the ball, whatever you call that. We don't have a Canada. We call it Miss Popular. But there I was with sneakers under my dress, you know, just kicking it. Just uh, just so swag. Just, just bringing <laughs> just the, the court swag to the stage. All I love it. day. All day. See, I really Amazing. appreciated this. It was really This has been awesome. I'm so, I'm just happy to, to know someone a little more that's out there in Chicago, so when it gets cold in New York, I can know someone else is dealing with it a little more. Yeah, definitely. And my sport, just to tell you, is rowing. Wait until I tell you I rowed for four years. Stop it. No, we need to take two all, for this all, interview. Of, all of high school. All of high school. We need to take a take two. And next time, I'm going to bring Dominic Reigns to this conversation because no. you absolutely have to meet Dom. You absolutely, we have an amazing cast, everybody. I, know. I feel like I'm oh. laughing with you the way I laugh with Dom and, and Brian and Nick. You would love these guys. So I'm really looking This is making to... me want to get back to work for sure. I'll bring someone else too. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to the kids. Yeah, yeah. Family, Dick, we need a family barbecue. Do something, family barbecue. As soon as COVID breaks, we need a family barbecue. Yes. Yes. It was a pleasure, brother. Amazing. It was really. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers to you. Good luck with everything. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.